Now we'd like to show you how to do this little welcome quilt. We're going to do them a quarter of a time and then those quarters are put together to make the whole circle. We need to bring it up to this point before we add it to the four uh, together because the bias stem that is added here needs to be added when the whole thing is together. The little corkscrew stems are just outline stitched with three strands of embroidery floss. Choose um, a theme fabric that you love and from that choose some other leaf colors. Now this is fall and the pattern will include a Christmas wreath and a spring wreath. You begin by making all of your dimensional pieces. You Xerox your pattern and you place your leaves on two pieces of fabric that are right side together. Sew on the solid line, cut on the dash line, and you'll get these little pieces like this. Just mass produce them. And then when you get to this point, you can put this in a little bag and take it with you when you have an appointment somewhere. Just sit and pull the papers out, turn them and press them. And so you'll get sets of these of the different colors. Okay, next we're going to Xerox. You need to Xerox your your paper block because we're going to piece right on this paper. And it's paper piece, so if you don't understand paper piecing or foundation piecing, watch some of our other videos. All of our fabric is placed on the unprinted side of the paper and all of our sewing, sewing is done with the paper side up. Now we place our number one, which is background and we place it right side away. Number one is always right side away. Everything else uh, is placed right side down. We have all of area number one covered. Now we need to know where to place our leaves, but there are no markings on this side. So we're going to machine baste just where the leaf goes into the seam. And on number one, we can machine baste two of the leaves. Now it's prompting you what color these will be. And you can change those colors. This is just so for a nice distribution of color. Now that will transfer the location of those leaves to this side. Then we take our little fabric leaves and we stack them so they're exactly on top of each other. And this says dark orange over here. So we're going to place the little raw edges, the open edges of those leaves stacked together so that they are a quarter of an inch past that basting. Then it says dark green, so we're going to stack some dark green so that it's a quarter of an inch past that basting and we'll pin that to secure that. Now we want to whack background fabric large enough for area two and three and we're going to do those in the order. So first we're going to do number two so we've got to find a piece big enough for number two. Right here it's big enough. We're going to place this right side down along the edge of the leaf so the bulk of the fabric is opposite the area we're trying to cover, or this area number two. We're going to pin that so that it won't move. Turn it over and sew on that whole line between one and two. When that is sewn, and we'll pull back and cover area two. And we'll do the same thing with area three. And when that is done and pressed, of course, we want to trim um, the extra out of the seam right here, out of the seam allowance, and press that back like that. Okay, now we've got our first set of leaves placed. Now we need to know where our second set of leaves are placed. So we turn it over, and we're going to machine baste again just where the second set of leaves goes into the seam or meets the seam line. And that will transfer that to um, this side. Here it is finished. And again we'll look and it says light green and light orange. So we'll stack our little leaves right on top of each other. And if they're right on top of each other, then you'll get a really perfect point at the ends. We'll pin that to secure that. Now, some of this um, paper piecing, if you're familiar with a crazy quilt, you know, where the seams go all over the place, you might kind of get that feeling with this pattern. 
because it seems to uh, accommodate these leaves in the position they need to be. The little background is, you know, kind of hodgepodge seams all over the place, which can be really fun if you want to vary the background a little bit. It's kind of crazy cool um, way that it's pieced. Okay, so we'll pin that. Then we're going to foundation piece area four and five, which will encase the raw edges of these two leaves. And we'll show you what that looks like next. All right, now we've foundation pieced seven and four. four. Then we turned it over and we'll machine based again where these next set of leaves are located, just where they meet that seam line. Now we'll transfer the location to this side. We're going to again place, you know, look at your color key if you need to look at what color goes where. It kind of helps you keep straight a little bit. And pin both, you know, stacked two sides together. Pin them so that they're a quarter of an inch past that line. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. It's, it's in another video we have, but a little review. Because this piece tends to have a lot of really odd pieces and they're hard when, maybe you've noticed when you flip and turn them they don't want to cover and that's one of the d things people are, get discouraged with paper piecing is you'll have these odd angles. So I'm going to teach you a little bit. Here's this number six and it, it comes way out here you know and we want to be able to cover that so you cut a piece that's pretty close to it and you place it over the area you're trying to cover so that all of it's covered. Now you take, you hold it in place, <clears throat> and you fold it on that seam line through both the paper and the fabric, and you'll get this nice little wannabe seam. Then you're going to reverse that fold, trying not to move the fabric. Reverse the fold, there, and that's going to be covered there. So then you carefully open it up without moving. Uh, you know the fabric kind of hold it in place while you open it. Now it's placed in the exact place where I turn it over and sew it, it will flip out and even cover this corner that might not be covered if I wasn't so careful. And I hope that helps you save some fabric in time because um, that can be frustrating. Alright, we'll show you the next step. Once the block has finished you want to mark the round circle that's going to go around for the stem and these corkscrew stems. We made them a little darker so you'll be able to see them when you hold it up to the light. Then cut out the blocks so that there's a quarter inch added to this outside line. And you'd sew the two or the four pieces together. Now we've taken a bias and folded it right wrong sides together and then you lay it exactly on the so that the raw edges are on the inside of that circle and then sew a quarter of an inch or uh, no larger than a quarter of an inch but just keep it consistent um, along that edge making sure that the raw edges are perfectly aligned with your markings for that circle. Once that is sewn then you'll press it because it's biased. You'll press it out and blind stitch, and you know lift the little leaves so that they're they will overlap like that. It's kind of tight, but it'll still fit. Um, now, sometimes when people are doing this, they'll stretch it a little bit and and it'll bulk, buckle. So here's a little iron-on pellon, and. Iron-on pellon really doesn't stay on real well, especially over seams, which is okay. You want it on there just long enough to make your uh, circle and, and keep it stable. And then I can trim around where it the stitches are and actually take this off. Then when I add the batting, it will have a little bit uh, better uh, quilted surface than it would if I left that on. All right, so we'll do that work. We'll do the blind stitch and we'll outline stitch our corkscrew stems and we'll show you the next step. 
All right, we're ready to add the details. We've begun here, and I'll show you how we do the berries. We've sandwiched this quilt and machine quilted it. Now, even though we put a stabilizer behind this when we put our ring on, it still was a little puffy here in the middle. Not bad. You know, you don't want to stretch this at all when you're putting it on, but somehow when we pull it over, that's just the nature of doing a circle. So when you when you begin to quilt this, make sure you work with this and pull it out and stretch it as you go. And it really turns out beautiful. Now, I like to really fill it in with uh, the meandering quilting and that somehow makes this dimension really pop. Um, then we, you know, we blind stitched this down the, uh, the folded edge of your stem and we have outline stitched our um, other little curly branches. Now we cut out using our pattern the uh, little grapes and it'll be the same for the berries of the holly. Then you just hand uh, running stitch basting along the outside. It's kind of a fairly tight basting um, just because we want to pull that in tight so it won't have as many wrinkles. Now I use real stuffing here, not batting fluffed or anything because it, it does shape the uh, berry better. And the trick on these berries is to overstuff them. Just put absolutely as much stuffing as you can and then pull it tight. And what that will do will round out the edges and give you fewer uh, wrinkles on the edges. Just really get it tight. And then to hold it, we'll go back and forth. You know, across the opening to close it. Just close it up tight. Now if a little bit shows like this, that's okay because that's going next to the quilt. And then um, you squash it around and make it just nice and round. The, the rounder and the tighter the stuffing, the prettier these are. They're not hard. Um, you know, it's going to take you a little while to put as many berries on here as we have in the design. But it's still um, worth it. I mean, that is the nature of quilting. Is it just is the journey. It just takes a little while, but wow, what a piece of art when it's done. Okay, put the open end next to the quilt and squash it down. And that will also round out the edges. And then with the thread you have... Um, just blind stitch or, or you know just stitch it on here I've come up here I'm going to go down right next to where it came up that's where it comes at, where it looks blind I'm not going in way over here you know it's coming up here and I'm not going in over here and making a long stitch I'm going back in right where the um, stitch came out and that's where you get the blind look of this and I'll just put that so that all the way around just make a beautiful little berry right there so there you go we've added our border and our then we'll bind it and we just have a real work of art here and I hope you enjoy this quilt